costs have been um, really struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic. The tourism sector has been the hardest hit by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Government are issuing different warnings to people not to travel to Uganda and putting, uh, you know, warning their residents not to move out of the country, but only to travel as and when it can. And as a result, um, you know, several countries too are not accepting Ugandans to go to their uh, to their country. The UK is the latest addition on that. If you're coming to Uganda, you have to really, really go through strict checkups so that you just you're checked and checked and checked. We have been added on the red list. But we are open for business. I should add the tourism sector, even though struggling, I think there's a bacon of hope. And um, I want to invite Dr. Lili Ajarova, who is uh, leading the team to promote, you know, tourism in this country to come in and uh, she, speak to, she speaks to us about one, how the you know, tourism sector has been hit, but also what are the investment opportunities and as well as what is government doing to support more investment into this sector. I want to invite Dr. Lili Ajarova, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Uganda Tourism Board. Lili, you're very welcome. Thank you very much, Solomon. Uh, warm greetings from Uganda to everyone on this platform right now. Uh, once again, Lilia Jarova is my name. In terms of describing what we have in terms of the tourism uh, resources, uh, Dr. Maggie did it very well, mentioning about the weather, mentioning about the different resources that we have. In the last few years, there has been a lot of development in the, in, in the infrastructural development that um, enhances the business in tourism, uh, but also for the leisure. You need the nice accommodation, the nice presentation in terms of food, the road, the airline, and there we have it right now. Um, yes, as Solomon mentioned, the tourism sector Tourism and travel across the globe has been the most hit with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, where I'm sitting right now in Uganda, um, um, we, we are open. When we first got the first lockdown last year in 2020, uh, the airport was shut down, all the borders were shut down. And for this second wave, um, we have organized ourselves better. And we thank His Excellency the President for allowing us to continue with the tourism business. Uganda is open. You're welcome uh, to you're welcome to visit and enjoy what we what we have. So right now, uh, tourism is open. So you're welcome to visit as much as Solomon, you mentioned about some of the restriction from the source market. Um, that is having an impact, but um, not too great because the way we have organized ourselves right from arrival at Entebbe International Airport we have specialized tourist vehicles that are picking the tourists, taking them to the testing center for those who do not have the vaccine yet. If you have your full vaccination, you actually don't need to do the testing at the airport on arrival. If you have to do it, we have organized uh, a special way, a seamless process for you to go through that. And um, then you get to go to specific facilities that we are very sure that the SOP is being followed. So we have um, organized this through from the airport to the different destinations within the country and majorly the national parks right now. Uh, the community tourism right now is stopped because we need, we need to get the communities to be safe but the national parks are open. SOPs are strictly being followed. We have all the rangers at least have got their first vaccination shot. Um, most of the tour guides and the hotel staff have all got their first vaccination shot. They are in the process of getting the second one now. 
but we are also strictly making sure everyone is protected. And we have the tour guides who have to start a trip with you, have to take a, present a PCR test, results of a negative report done within 48 hours. So for you right now to travel to Uganda, it's very safe. And that is just to guarantee you that uh, if you decide to travel now, it will be very safe for you. Um, just to add on uh, some of the other things that you saw in the video um, and what Dr. Maggie mentioned about, uh, Uganda is also a great destination for faith-based tourism. We have the only Baha'i temple in Africa, in Uganda, in Kampala. We have um, one, the second largest mosque in Kampala, the Gaddafi Mosque. The architecture and everything is, is a tourist at attraction in itself, but also for the faith uh, experience. Uh, it's an, uh, we have the Uganda Matters for the Christians. That's, that's another big attraction in terms of faith-based tourism. The food that we have to offer, the organic, the diversity of it. Uh, Uganda is a great destination for honeymooners. For some of you out there, you know, who might uh, have the opportunity to want to go on honeymoon, we are here, just come to Uganda and you will have the best experience. Uganda is a great destination for film locations. For those in, um, in uh, production of uh, videography and films, uh, there is no better place that you will have for film location than in Uganda in terms of the dramatic landscapes that we have among other things, including the people. The adventure experiences from upsailing down the CP Falls to climbing the snow-capped Renzori to boating on River Nile and so many others. The adventure is countless. So it's like the best destination that you can have, especially in the face of COVID pandemic because most of these destinations are in the open air, in the wild, so there's hardly any risk that you will run in getting um, the infection. Uh, let me talk to the opportunities that we have in tourism, um, investment opportunities that we have in the tourism sector. Um, before the pandemic, we had, uh, we, the tourism sector was contributing up to 8% to the GDP, bringing in uh, 1.8 billion US dollars in, uh, in foreign exchange earning, employing up to about 700,000 Ugandans in direct employment in the sector. This of course went down to zero uh, last year at the end of March when we went to, into a total lockdown. But from the projections that we had made and even up to this point, um, we, we still believe that in the next couple of years, the numbers are going to go beyond what we had before the lockdown uh, at the beginning of 2020. And uh, there is a great need for investment in accommodation, hotels, lodges, camping facilities in the national parks, but outside the national parks as well. There's also opportunity in destination experience development. Uh, investment, like cultural centers, canopy walks, walking safaris, um, medical tourism, we still need more of the medical services uh, that can be specialized to bring in international um, people in, and that is medical tourism as well. Sports tourism, we have great talent in this country, Uganda great talent for sports, um, array of, of, of it, and uh, we lack the facilities. And uh, if we can have more investment into sports facility, we can be able to bring international people to come and train from Uganda. Right now, the government of Uganda is trying to establish a training center for athletes in Kapchorwa. 
And that's only one. So we need more investment in sports as well so that we can have international athletes and other sports people come in and train from here. And that's an opportunity in investment in tourism as well. Wildlife sanctuaries, Uganda Wildlife Authority can give user rights, licenses for you to actually run uh, wildlife sanctuaries. So those are some of the opportunities. And um, just once again, to say that we are open, um, there's opportunity for you to right now visit Uganda, come and enjoy the beauty that you, we have. Uganda is the part of Africa. There's no any other better country that you would want to be in other than in Uganda. And for the Ugandans out there, feel proud about your country. Come and visit, come and invest in Uganda. Thank you very much for listening to me. Over to you, Solomon. Lillian, thank you very much. Um, we're open for business. And I'm really grateful that you put up some of these um, help, you know, helpful issues at the airport, at the Interim International Airport. Um, and and I'm, I'm glad to hear that there is a special bus that and a special treatment to the people who are coming to the country. I know that the hotel industry in Uganda has been hardly hit and, you know, it's slowly opening up, um, you know, a little bit. It's, it's really tough for everyone. So I'm glad that, um, that uh, you, the, the government is trying to find ways of keeping the tourism sector open uh, because it really contributes greatly. I think the last time I checked it was 7.7% of our GDP comes from the tourism. So thank you very much. Uh, that's Lilia, Jarrell, ladies and gentlemen.